This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. AccuDraw is perhaps the most important feature in MicroStation. It's a drawing aid that provides considerable assistance in the drafting process by offering coordinate point placement based on your previous actions. To do this, AccuDraw evaluates the placement of the last data point, the current location of the cursor, the current tool's needs, and any other inputs you may have used. AccuDraw is then able to anticipate your next action and provide a very quick and effective method of entering appropriate coordinate values. AccuDraw also comes with a very wide range of shortcut keys that invoke special functions, allowing even more sophisticated data point entry. All this may sound a bit complicated, but as you'll see, AccuDraw's actions are very intuitive and extremely user-friendly. You'll be using AccuDraw as your standard drawing aid from now on, unless I direct you otherwise. It is very important that you're completely comfortable with AccuDraw's contribution to the design process. Instruction in this video and all following videos relies heavily on your ability to use AccuDraw as a normal part of the drawing process. AccuDraw is on by default when you initially start MicroStation, and you can tell whether it's on or not by looking at the line just above the status line. You should see an X and a Y with a setting box in each case. This is the AccuDraw settings box, and typically it's docked right next to the view control toggles. This is where you enter dimensional information. You don't have to leave AccuDraw's setting box on the bottom line if you don't wish to. You can drag this box off the screen and look at it as an actual settings window. And I'm going to do that for at least part of this video because it's easier to see. The values you see currently in the window are the actual coordinates of the cursor, and they will change as you move the cursor and stop the cursor. Now these are values which are offset from the global origin. AccuDraw becomes considerably more interesting when you start a drawing tool. Start the line tool, in this case smart line, make sure joint elements is off, and data point in the screen, and drag the cursor. Two things happen. First you see the compass display in the screen. That's a square box with the green and red markers. And secondly, as you drag the cursor and extend the line, you see different values in the AccuDraw window. In this case, we're seeing dimensional offsets from that first data point. And you can see this a little more if I bring the cursor very close to that data point. You'll see that the offset becomes smaller and smaller and larger and larger as I take the cursor away. As I move around, if I bring the cursor down to the same position as the red marker, notice that the line locks to that axis. And that, of course, is the positive x-axis. You'll feel it lock into place. Notice that in the AccuDraw settings box, the y value, which is the vertical value, is 0. And we have an x value, which is subject to the cursor position. Conversely, if I move the cursor up to the vertical position on the y-axis, it will lock to the y-axis. And now the AccuDraw settings box is telling me that I have a zero offset in x and a dimensional offset in y. If I drag the cursor directly downwards, still locked to the y-axis, except now I have a negative y-value while my x-value remains the same. Try it this side, lock to that axis, which is the negative x-axis. I now see a negative x value and a zero y value. Move your cursor around just to get the feel for that. This locking to the axis is called indexing. Notice what happens now if you pick a second data point. The compass relocates to that second data point and it aligns itself with the previous element. This happens every time you data point. The compass moves with the placed data point and aligns itself with the element just drawn. The compass disappears when you reset, right mouse click, and reappears again when you next start a line or an element, and then realigns again with the next one. Right click. What's happening here is that MicroStation is anticipating your next move. 
and it's assuming that you will likely want to draw at right angles to the previous line. So the lines are compass with the previous line, so you can quickly lock to one of the axes to place the next data point. If you are drawing in a rectangular fashion, you can place right angle corners very quickly. If your next line is not at right angles to the previous line, you can simply drag the line away from the axis to place a data point. Now this is the simplest and most basic mode of operation for AccuDraw. I'm going to undo those line placements. Now AccuDraw actually has two compass modes. One for rectangular coordinates, which is what you've looked at right now, and that is the square compass. But it also has a polar compass. And you can see that by pressing the spacebar. If I keep pressing the spacebar, it switches between the polar compass and the rectangular compass. Switch to the polar compass. Exactly the same action is happening here, except that if you look at the AccuDraw window, you'll see now we have different dimensional inputs. The top one is a length, and the bottom one is an angle. So now as I drag my cursor around, I'm seeing the physical length of the line that I'm dragging, which is offset from the first data point, and the angle from zero, which is the x-axis. Again, as we drag around, you'll see the compass changing to 180 to negative 90. It's showing negative angles at this point. 180 is positive. It's positive all the way around this way. But it's negative as soon as you go below the x-axis. The angle display can be changed to positive all around the compass if necessary. So just to recap, the rectangular compass is used to enter x and y offsets from the first point, whereas the polar compass is used to enter length and angle offsets from the data point. Now a little more detail about the actual compass itself. The red marker crosses the positive x-axis, and the green marker is the positive y-axis. The shaded square, in this case, because it's a rectangular compass, is called the drawing plane indicator. This becomes more relevant in 3D drawings. What you might find a little confusing at first is when you first start a data point, the compass is aligned with the view and with the axes of the drawing. But as soon as you data point and the compass moves to the end point of the line, the compass of course aligns with the line and the X and Y axes are not those of the view window or the design. They're simply the x and y axes of that drawing plane indicator. That can be a little confusing because, for example, if I move my cursor vertically, I'm seeing a zero x value in the AccuDraw window, which is not true for the drawing itself. It's only true for the compass itself. That takes a little getting used to, but you'll see how this works out quite nicely later on. I'll undo that line. One other thing to remember is that to enter dimensional information into AccuDraw, the AccuDraw window must have what's called focus. In other words, the window is active and there should be a small cursor flashing in one of the input boxes. Quite often when you're in the middle of a drawing operation, you'll lose focus in AccuDraw because focus has gone to, let's say, the tool settings window, in which case you'll need to regain focus in AccuDraw. And you have two ways of doing that. You can press the F11 function key or you can simply click in the AccuDraw window. For example, let me start another tool. I'll start the Place Line tool and activate the Tool Settings window. That window now has focus. AccuDraw does not have focus. It's grayed out. If I want to enter information here, I can't at the moment. I must press either F11 or click in the AccuDraw box. I'll press F11. Now I have focus in AccuDraw and I can enter information. You'll find this situation occurs quite frequently as you change operations or change tools. AccuDraw has its own settings box and you should take a look at that. Go to settings and AccuDraw. Let's take a fairly close look at this. Operation tab, all those items should be on because they help with the function of AccuDraw. These are optional. You can experiment with those if you wish. Always show compass, for example, 
or shows the ACI draw compass on the screen, even if you've just terminated an operation. Display. You can change the colors of the ACI draw compass. If, for example, you have difficulty distinguishing between red and green, you can change the X and Y axis markers. I've changed the fill color on mine for this video. Yellow shows up a little better than the default, which was blue. And yours is probably set to blue right now. And coordinates. This tab sets the type of view you're seeing. The coordinate system is set to view. Now this is pretty much the default for 2D drawings. But if you're working with 3D, you can see things from different viewpoints. Leave it on view. Type is rectangular, because the last time you used a compass it was rectangular, but you could set a pole here. But that will simply switch backwards and forwards anyway as you press the spacebar. Unit round off is interesting in that you can set a specific dimension and a specific angle for everything that you draw. A good example is if you are drawing isometric shapes, you could lock the angle at 30 degrees and you would always draw at 30 degree angles. So please don't turn those on at the moment. And indexing and snapping to each axis is on at the moment, but you can turn that off if you wish so there's no snapping to the axis. I recommend you leave that on. And the tolerance is the locate tolerance around snapping points. AccuDraw has an on-off toggle. If you don't want to draw with AccuDraw, simply turn AccuDraw off with the toggle.